Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us Hannah who is an animal biology student at the U of A. So this week's episode of Neighborhood Nature we are featuring insects and bugs. Insects and bugs are very diverse and they come in all different kinds and there's a good chance that you'll be able to find some in your neighborhood. Insects can sometimes be very hard to spot like this small beetle that we found on our strawberry plant. It's so small that even the drops of water look big next to it. Here's a bug that looks like a beetle, but it's not. It is a shield bug, otherwise known as a stink bug. And stink bugs are really not good if you have gardens, because what they do, they suck the juices out of plants. So if you see one in your garden, take it out. Like stink bugs, lace wings will also make a stinky smell if you try to pick them up. Unlike shield bugs, lace wings are good for your garden. Their larvae feed on plant-eating bugs, like aphids and caterpillars. Some bugs make stinky smells when disturbed, and other bugs make noise, like this click beetle. When disturbed, a click beetle uses a pointed projection on its chest to click and flip itself into the air. You can recognize a click beetle by the presence of two spines on the corners of the thorax, and the thorax is the middle segment of an insect, between the head and the back end. Some of these insects and bugs we found in our backyard and others we have found on our walks in our neighborhood. We found this tiger beetle by a creek and as its name suggests, it is a carnivore and it has large jaws to eat its food. Here's a different beetle that we found by our house, by our spruce tree to be exact. It is a spruce zebra beetle and the markings on it kind of resemble a bald-faced hornet. It's larvae feed on spruce trees, so it's probably not good for your spruce trees if you see one of these. This is a type of sweat bee called a blood bee. Its larvae have a rather interesting diet. The adult finds a burrow of a different kind of bee and destroys the egg that's there and then lays its own egg. So the larva that hatches eats the food that was stored for the other bee. This is a fly that's trying to pretend it's a bee, but it's not. It's a hoverfly. Hoverflies don't sting, although they try to make you think that, that they can by mimicking the, the coloration of bees and wasps. Hoverflies are great for your garden because they're beneficial pollinators. This one we found at the creek, but here's one we found in our garden. Hoverflies can hover in midair, but wasps can't. So if you see something hovering in midair, take a closer look and maybe wait for it to land, because it might be a hoverfly. Now this is actually a bee not something pretending to be a bee. It's on our Katoni aster and it is pollinating the flowers on there. The ants are enjoying some nectar too. They're not very good pollinators though because their bodies are smooth instead of hairy like the bee and so they don't pick up pollen very well. Ants also seem to be fond of peonies even before they open and especially after they've opened. So make sure you shake peonies off before bringing them inside. This insect I find slightly disturbing so this is a kind of parasitic wasp, and they do have stingers, but they use them for laying their eggs in the larvae of other insects, for example, caterpillars. This means that they're good for your garden, and they can't sting you. Parasitic wasps often have a horse head shape on their wing, which here is outlined in blue, so that's why I knew that this wasp wouldn't sting me. Wings can be a useful feature in identifying insects. This is something that I tend to think is a dragonfly, and it's not. It's a damselfly. Dragonflies hold their wings out at their sides, but damselflies can fold their wings back over their body. Here's another insect that has wings that fold back, and I also find it slightly scary. This is a giant stonefly, also called a salmonfly, because fish love them. And they're very large. Yeah, this is the, or one of the largest species in the world, actually. It is about four centimeters long, if you don't count the antennae. And where do we find it? It's found near water. So this one was actually found flying around pretty far from water, so we don't know what it was doing there, but it was probably very lost. Its size might make it look a bit scary, but it can't sting or bite, so it is safe to handle. You might be wondering why we didn't feature any spiders on this episode, and this is because spiders are not insects. Insects have three body segments, antenna, and six legs, and often wings. And spiders do not have these things. Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature and good luck finding insects in your neighborhood. And we will see you next week on Wednesday at 7.